Welcome everybody to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. It is your man, your host, Brent Daniels. And you know what's the best thing about this podcast? The best thing about this podcast is this is an instructional podcast, okay? This is not education. This isn't storytelling. This isn't necessarily entertainment. You know what I mean? This is instructional. People are watching and listening to this podcast and literally going out and doing deals in their market. So it's so incredible to me. I have the honor, I have the privilege every week to come to you guys in this form, whether it be on YouTube or whether it be on the podcast and interview some amazing, amazing, amazing wholesale, wholesale professionals from around the country. And I'm excited today because out of Rhode Island, Rhode Island, I think this is the I think this is the only wholesaler in the state of Rhode <laughs> Island, but it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Jesse Andrews to the podcast. Say hello, Jesse. Brent, what's happening, man? How are you, bud? I am doing excellent, man. I'm excited to have you on because uh, you have recently in the private TTP uh, Facebook group, you have posted some very, very, very uh, large wires that you have received from this business. But before I get into that, let's talk about you. Let's talk about what brought you into wholesaling. How did you, how did you find wholesaling? And, and tell me about kind of the beginning. Let's, let's talk about your evolution in this business. All right. Well, I mean, I started wholesaling. I think the, the first deal I've ever done was mid 2014. And um, I, I kind of stumbled into the wholesaling by mistake, really. I've been really interested in the, uh, the, the real estate category, if you will, but never really knew what to do. So, like, you know, any kid out of high school, I, you know, went to college and got a degree. I um, didn't really do too well in school was always kind of daydreaming and, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, everything else other than school. So right. I, I managed to, to graduate and I did pretty well, got a job in the corporate world and just wasn't happy. You know, I was traveling a lot. They, they paid me enough to, uh, to have a pretty comfortable life, but I wasn't really getting ahead. Um, didn't have a lot of time with my family. So, you know, I, I kind of looked into the real estate world a little bit. Um, there's a, a local mentor here that, that I've worked with in the past and he kind of introduced me to it not nearly in depth as he could have. So sure. I just kind of, you know, went in and got my feet wet. Uh, the first deal I ever did was a, a beat up three family in the, the worst neighborhood in Providence. And, uh, in hindsight, I, I shouldn't have been in that neighborhood at all, but you know, it is what it is. So, uh, you know, I was able to get that deal done and I'm like, wow, this is, this is real. This is actually working. Yeah. You know, so from, from there, um, ups and downs, you know, with wholesale one, Still working my day job, being consistent with marketing, being consistent with the business, you know, and then start back up months later. Uh, it wasn't until December of 2016. Um, I'll never forget it. It was the week before Christmas. I'm in a hotel in Philadelphia. My little guy had just started crawling. Yeah. Like big milestone. Sure. I'm in a hotel. Sure. I'm super bummed out because I'm not home. Minutes later, I get a phone call that my job was being... They call it restructured, but sure. basically. So I, I was given the option to uh, take a, a lesser position with, with lesser pay or a severance package. So, you know, I, I, we prayed about it and I talked with my wife. So we took severance and went wholesaling full time. Awesome. Shortly thereafter, yep, shortly thereafter, I, I joined the tribe. Um, you know, it was a, a big commitment, but in hindsight, I mean, it's paid back so, so many times from that. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I joined the tribe and, um, you know, started making some progress and, and relatively consistently doing deals. And then I joined TTP uh, middle of last year. And that's when things really started taking off. Awesome. And for anybody, if this is your first podcast listening to, the, the tribe is referenced to the Wholesaling Inc. Uh, program, the Wholesaling Inc. Uh, mentorship program, which takes you in and really gives you the foundation that you need for wholesaling property. So you got that. I went through it as well in February of 16, 2016. And then my business just started exploding, exploding, exploding. And I think a part of it was just being around uh, people. Like, it's really interesting. Like uh, my whole life is wholesaling and teaching wholesaling and, and, and teaching how to talk to people. And then you go outside to like civilians or, or to whoever else out there and they have no idea what you're talking about, have no interest 
in what you're talking about. So it's really awesome to like connect with people that are doing the same thing as you, you know, interested in the same thing, passionate about that, have that, you know, pilot light burning inside them to be in real estate, to make a successful real estate business. And I think that's one of the big, big, big benefits to joining either Wholesaling Inc or TTP or whatever it is. Um, from that side is you get connected with a community of people that are doing the same thing. Do you, do you feel the same way? Oh, hundred percent, man. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it, it's definitely having that community around me has really, really helped me. You know, it's, it's definitely been a big, uh, a big godsend. And, you know, sometimes I mean, it, it's not always easy, you know, and sometimes you, you kind of get into a, a situation where, you know, you're spending market money in marketing and you may not be getting the deal flow that you, you need. And then, your mind starts doing funky things, you know? So it's, it's important to just kind of sit back and rely on what you know and, and believe the process. Well, and that's the interesting thing, right? The mindset of, an, of, of a true entrepreneur that's out there, that's not getting, you know, some sort of help from something else. You know, some people do this part-time and it's their side side deal till they can, you know, make enough to get out of their job. But I think you let you, um, basically being in corporate world was just making you itchy from like day one, right? You were just like, oh, oh my gosh. So bad. Right? So bad. I mean, I think yeah. that's... That's the true sign of an entrepreneur. You know what I mean? Where you're like, okay, I can, I, I have security here. I've got a job. I went to school for this, you know, but it almost feels like a continuation of, okay, we're going to school and you line up in these rows and then you go to college and you're in these rows getting taught by a, you know, a teacher. And then you go into corporate and it's, you know, meetings and, you know, you've got that teacher or boss or whatever it is. And you're just like, when does this end? And, and a lot of yep. people, are on that carousel forever right but you know when you get off yeah. and you start doing it yourself then all of a sudden you have to have that mindset that strong mindset that knows that your identity that that part inside of you that says that you're a winner has to be so strong because you're going to go through some ups and downs you're going to fail you're yeah. going to you're going to take some you know some some lumps you know, you're going to, you're, you're going to take some shots of the chin for sure. But how did you get through it? Like when you were starting out and, and, and it's just kind of, you know, you're doing some deals here and there. How did you like, how did your mindset, like, how did you keep it bulletproof or at least to the point where you're now, you know, consistent and being able to like grow your business? Well, uh, I'll tell you, man, uh, I'm really blessed to have a very supportive wife. So from the get go, you know, she was on board with me. So I couldn't have done it without her for real, Yep. you know? And, um, so that's, that's a huge plus, but I think a lot of it is, is my faith in knowing that if I trust him, everything will be okay. Awesome. But also following, following the, the wholesaling ink instruction, man, it's, it's not difficult by any means. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very cut and dry. You know, you guys have always explained everything and it's not, Oh, well, you know, maybe you should do this or maybe you should go to the courthouse and do this. It's like, no, do this, come back tomorrow. Yep. You know, and it's, it's yep. follow the instructions and it's inevitable. It really is. Yeah, it, it truly is. And I think that you, you really hit on something there, that faith part of it, right? You know, that, yeah. that absolute faith that, um, that you can do this, that you, that, that there's some, something bigger than us that's out there. That's, that's really supportive. You know what I mean? I think that that's a huge yeah. aspect of it for sure. And having a wife and family that's on board is just absolutely critical because there are tough times. There are tough times when you're lying in bed or you're thinking, or you're waiting for a deal or you're, or a deal falls out or something. And you're like, Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? You know what I mean? But something always happens. As long as you are talking to enough people, as long as you're having quality conversations with distressed homeowners, you cannot lose in this business. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's exactly it, man. So let's talk about your business now. What, what does your business look like? Is it just you? Do you work from home? Do you have an office? Do you have staff? Do you have a VA? Do you have acquisition man? Like, t t tell me the structure of your business. You there? So it's just my VA. I'll go to VA. The office. It's, Is it it's better you, now? It's just you and a VA? Yeah, so me, me and two VAs. One handles... I call it office nonsense, but you know, just miscellaneous office stuff, scrubbing list and, and filtering data. Uh, and the other VA, uh, is a cold caller. Awesome. So yeah. And I'm handling everything else right now. It's, um, it's a challenge, you know, I'm certainly looking, um, forward to 
acquisitions manager slash lead manager, somebody to, to at least help me with follow up and whatnot. But, um, you know, right now I'm kind of burning the candle at both ends and, you know, looking for to that, that next step. But, uh, yeah, I have a home office and it's a nice little quiet corner of my house where I can come and work and do follow up calls and it's my home base. Awesome. And uh, are you making any of the calls yourself right now? So I work and I was, you know, committing three to four hours a day. I, I just ran out of time. So I, oddly enough, I, I found a gentleman on um, the Wholesaling Inc. website, George, that, that you know quite well. Oh, Edwin. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, and he's got, um, yeah, he's got a, a call center out of the Philippines. So I figured, you know, let's, let's give it a whirl. And that's where these last two deals have come from. Um, you know, working with him is great. It's like any, any new thing. There's going to be hiccups and there's going to be some things that we need to figure out. But I mean, all in all, from that one caller calling four hours a day, she's been calling from uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, my time, to about 7 p.m., which I find has been really good because you get a lot of people after work. Um, but yeah, and, and you know, I'll get the leads sent to me and then I can go from there. What does he charge you an hour? Is it six bucks? Six bucks an hour. Yeah, it's it's really, really reasonable, guys. If you want to reach out, George Flans, F-L-A-N-S, you can find him on Facebook. There's a little instruction for you, a little, a little uh, nugget for you. You can certainly reach out and see if he has availability. I know he is uh, restricted on the amount of people that he has, but he's – so I, George, Edwin, he goes by both. Um, mm -hmm. But he, he has been, he has been my, one of my cold callers for three years. For three years. I mean, that guy has made me more money than anybody else in my business. <laughs> uh, he's just, he, he really is a master. He was, you know, when I talk about um, the hierarchy of, of cold callers, you know, it starts with you at the top. You're going to be the best. Next is going to be somebody that calls from your home or your office. Um, and then next is going to be an American living abroad. And that's what Edwin is. Edwin is, was from Texas, moved to the Philippines. He started making calls for me uh, three years ago. And it's been, I mean, a ridiculous amount of success from it. Um, and it's just, you know, and he's, he's, his, his wife is um, uh, Filipino. So he's, he's uh, connected with, I mean, he's been out there forever. And so he's been training people on doing that. And uh, yeah. in some, it work, and in honesty, for everybody out there listening or watching, it works better in some markets than others when you use somebody that isn't uh, American making the calls. But obviously in Rhode Island, it's, it's working awesome for you. Yeah, no, it is. I have no complaints at all. Um, you know, I, I think admittedly, I might be able to do better on a result standpoint. Um, if it were somebody that was, that was, you know, native English speaking, but going into that, I kind of knew that. So, yep. you know, kind of throwing more leads at it at this point, yep. you know, until at the point where, um, you know, eventually I, I can kind of take business in house. Awesome. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's all about expectations. You know what I mean? If you do hire somebody, they're going to be very consistent if they're living abroad, but you're going to need to have a lot more leads from them and there's going to be less quality there. Uh, so you're going to have to sift through all of those to get to the best leads. That's absolutely right. So let's talk, let's get everybody excited. Let's talk about an actual deal. Let's talk about success here. Let's talk about something that's done. Now you, you posted two big wires. Let's talk about the biggest one and step me through. Give me the four pillars here, right? I want to know, um, I want to know what their um, uh, motivation is. They're tied the condition of the property, their timeline, their motivation, and their price. So go with the condition of the property first. Well, first, let's start with this. It was a TTP yeah. lead, right? It was a cold call. So this yep. is it was one a, cold, cold call. call. And, yep. and what list was it? So it was a, a list. It was actually a new list. Um, it was a, a website called Vacant House Data Feed. Yep. And um, it's a subscription website. And I, I pulled a vacant house list. And I figured it, you know, for the, the price, it was $100 or $97 per month. So I'm like, well, let's let's pull a list and kind of see what traction we get. So the, the caller had called. I woke up one morning to the lead in my inbox, which is pretty cool, right? Yep. Um, and I, I listened through the call and I listened to the notes. And it was a woman who called. It was a, a two-family house in Providence near Providence College. And if you're not you know, familiar on PC, it's a, it's a very – it's a pretty affluent neighborhood. Yep. Um, it's a 
it's a pretty nice Catholic college. I mean, they have a pretty decent basketball team. It's kind of a little roadie pride there. Sure. But um, nice area, right? So property values are pretty high. So I call her back, and I was, you know, she was she was pretty vague on the phone. Uh, she's like, well, the house it needs a little bit of work. You know, I've been living here for thirty years, um, but overall, not too bad. I just put a new roof on it. I'm like, okay, that's that's pretty cool. You know, so I'm kind of looking at uh, running comps while I'm speaking with her, and I knew the property, the value is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of two two eighty to two ninety. Yep. You know, and then I go and I, I ask the questions as uh, as instructed, and she's like, you know, I'm looking to get one hundred eighty thousand for it. So I'm like, all right, well, this this could be something here. Yeah. Um, the timeline. So she was like, well, I would like to move to Florida. My brother's in Naples. Uh, you know, anytime between now and the fall. So I'm like, all right, well, kind of vague. Okay. Yep. Yep. A little vague. A yep. little vague. Um. And then motivation. She didn't. She didn't really say. She's sick of the, the cold winters and we've had a pretty cold winter. Yeah. So on the surface, it really, it was kind of like a lukewarm lead. Yeah. Like I'll tell you what, I had an appointment the next day, uh, in the city. So I'm like, if you're free in the morning, I'd love to come meet with you and, and talk about things. So I, I get there and hedge is totally overgrown. You can't even see the front of the house. Um, the house is definitely in rough shape. Mm -hmm. And then I go inside and she was a collector ah. and there was stuff everywhere that everywhere is, that is a very kind way of saying a horror <laughs> okay yeah she liked to collect stuff yeah um the house was was in definitely in rough shape um stuff everywhere she was you know she was a hoarder um and as i'm talking to her you know i'm, I'm going through and trying to get the expectation of of what she's looking for and in, in what i can do to help so we start talking for a little bit just about life in general and it turns out that she is receiving notices from the city that they're going to uh, put her house, uh, uh, put a lien, going to tax sale. I'm like, oh, well, I get it. And then she's talking about how she doesn't have any money to even pay the, the – it was like a $2,200 sewer bill that she yeah. was delinquent on. Yeah. So she didn't know what she was going to do. And then the clock's ticking and um, she's arthritic, so the cold was bothering her and she can barely walk. So it was one thing after another after another. So I, I, I told her, you know, pretty, pretty honestly, um, what the, the property value is. I told her what my intentions are. I told her, you know, usually what the costs of, of this kind of process is. And eventually she mentioned to me that, she, you know, if she could sign today and sell in three weeks, then she would. So then really the, the last piece of the puzzle was, was a price. Um, so I, I told her, I'm, I'll give you my word that, that I'm going to give you the best price that I can um, but you know, it's going to be a discount from what market value would be just because of speed and, and convenience for her. And she's like, I understand. So I, I, I ran home, um, you know, pulled better comps. I'm also a realtor, so I have access to MLS. So pulled better comps to get a, a better understanding. And, uh, you know, I've done some rehabs as well. So ran those numbers. I called her back the next morning and told her, you know, I, I know you're looking for, I think it was 180 or 185,000. Yeah. Really the best I can do is 115 and she's like well that's less than i thought but okay that i'm now i'm thinking you know, like i should have hit her at 105 but that's you know I'm... so did she real quick real so, quick did she give yep. you when you were pre-qualifying her did you know going in she wanted around 180 185 yeah that's what she told me to, uh, told the caller on the phone awesome so, so your caller yep. was so this is really important for everybody listening out there. When your caller is in these conversations or when you're making these calls, you want to pull out the four pillars of prequal: condition, timeline, motivation, most importantly, the price. Okay. Yep. Really see if you can get that out of them. And, and if you do, you have all of the information that you need to make fast decisions and get there and get the contract signed. So go ahead. So you, you yep. knew going in 180, 185, you gave her 115. Yes. And she accepted. I went over there the next day and, and signed paperwork and, um, you know, kind of told her what the next process is, is we're going to have, uh, you know, a bunch of people come through, but it's only going to be a 45 minute window on a Saturday morning. Yep. And I uh, went through, I took pictures of the property and tried to dig deeper into what she needed. And really what she needed was help moving some stuff from her, her house into storage. Yep. She had gone through and picked out what was necessary and what wasn't. Um, 
and she needed everything else just to stay there. Yeah. So I'm like, well, that's easy. Just leave whatever you don't want, and I'll come over next week, and I'll help you. I have a pickup truck, and help her move some stuff to storage. So that was great. Awesome. So now I have now I have the signed contract, and I go through and I send it out to my buyers list. How do you send it? How do you how do you how do you um, let them know? So I sometimes I'll text blast, but I've had some spotty results with that. Right. Us too. Um, so yeah. I, I sent I sent this one out on Mailchimp. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, sent it to all, all my buyers, and I followed up with uh, about a hundred or so via text, but you know, text from, from my phone, copy and paste text message style. Sure. So, you know, I, I have a handful of people interested. About 20 people told me they're interested. We set up the, uh, the walkthrough slash inspection for, it was like 10 a.m. on a Saturday. Yep. My, uh, my suggested price was 150000 Okay. And um, we, we go through and pe- people are coming in and out of the property and a lot of people scoffing. Like, oh, man, this place is terrible. This place is a disaster. What are you talking about? Yep. One guy came to me and he's like, I want to make you an offer on the spot. I'm like, well, thank you. I appreciate that. But that's not, you know, I'm looking for highest best tomorrow afternoon. Yep. Um, he, he didn't really like that. Sure. So, so he left and it is what it is. So I, I thanked everyone for coming, you know, highest and best by next day tomorrow. I get a call later on that night from a realtor that I've done a lot of deals with in the past. And that guy that spoke with me was actually one of his buyers because I have you know, <laughs> yeah. many realtors on, on the uh, on the list. So uh, he's like, "Well, he wants to make an all cash offer, three week, three week close at one hundred and sixty five thousand." And I was asking one fifty. So um, with him, I've I've done deals with him in the past. So I, uh, you know, I was going to have to pay him a little a little something for a finder fee. Yep. So yeah. So. We, um, we sent, I sent over the, the, uh, assignment contract. Yep. He signed it and we, um, we put money in, in escrow and open escrow. And was, so that that, the, was that the biggest deal to date that you had done? Yeah, that's the biggest deal. When biggest you deal. sent out, when you said this is, this is great. Cause I go through this all the time. Even now I don't even send them out anymore, but I see the DocuSigns. When I get yep. that DocuSign back that says completed DocuSign and it's some assignment for whatever, I get so excited. Like, were you just like looking at this like, oh, this is game changing. You know what I mean? Uh, totally, man. I mean, that's, that's a really, really big deal. And right around the time I had a, a, another couple of properties in, in similar situation. So I'm like, wow, now I have a few killer properties, both in escrow. Now we just need to, you know, push and persevere this through closing because, you know, it's not done till it's done. So what you know? what'd you what'd you net on that deal? So on this one I netted forty forty two thousand dollars. And what'd you net on the second one? Twenty. Woo, woo. Hold on a second. Yep. I gotta stand back here. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Incredible. So sixty two thousand dollars on uh, essentially uh, originated from two phone calls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, incredible. I mean, and 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 that wasn't even you didn't even initiate those calls. You had a VA do it at six dollars an hour. Right, right. <laughs> What's the it, return it's, it's on amazing. investment? It's incredible. I know. And when you really kind of put it like that, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's remarkable. It's absolutely amazing. And I, I feel like I'm totally blessed. Yeah. Um, you know, it's cert- things like that will help you forget the dark days. Yep. You know, the dark days, you're, you're on the phone for four hours and your head spinning and, you know, you, you don't have any, any viable leads coming through and it's all a bunch of looky loos and you're just like, what's going on, man. But yeah, that's, that's when, uh, Everything is redeemed and, you know, you're rewarded for your, your perseverance and, you, you know, just go get it nature. It is. And, and that goes back to the foundation of wholesaling, which is you, uh, it all comes down to having quality conversation with distressed property owners. That's it. I, and now here's the thing. You could do that three ways. One, you could market to them, right? Traditional methods, pay-per-click, a direct mail, and have them call you, right? It works. It definitely works. It's just it, it costs a bunch, and you have to have a flexible schedule because you have to get back with those people instantly. 
Two, you can get referrals right. by people knowing that you do buy houses, that you're in real estate, and they send you deals. It happens. It's not very predictable, but it happens. Or three, you right. go out there and you prospect for them, and you, you, you bring those deals to you. You literally pull money out of the air when you're, <laughs> when you're making calls. It, it is. Yeah. It, it is. And, it's, and, and the cost is just so... Uh, uh, unbelievable. Plus, you get to do it on your own schedule. That's the best right. thing. Because remember, I, I bet, I bet, and 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 just kind of correct me if I'm wrong, but I bet when you get those leads in from your cold caller, you're you're not having to call them in like five minutes, right? Right. Because we're we're the only one that's been in touch with them nine out of ten times. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Like my people get all the info and then they'll call them back. You know, sometimes within the hour, but some people are like, call me next Tuesday and we'll get it going. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's yeah. just a totally different life. It's just so incredible um, that you have the ability to just pull this out of thin air. I mean, it's just, it's, it's so exciting to me. I mean, $62,000 on two phone calls. That's right? crazy. Yeah. So talk to, talk to everybody new out there, everybody starting, or maybe somebody that's considering, you know, implementing or, 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 or using uh, TTP or, or cold calling for their business. What, what would, advice would you give them starting out if they've never made a call or had people call for them? You know, it, it's tough. I, I think one of the, the biggest hurdles that, well, I wouldn't say the biggest hurdle, but one of the biggest things that affected me was was negativity on the phone, yeah. whether it be from people calling back um, from direct mail. I've yeah. had people call me back from Bandit Science. I've had people on the other end of the phone, TTP, and they're just nasty. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, you got to develop a thick skin mm -hmm. and, and realize you don't know. Sometimes you might be getting these people on a really bad day. You yep. know, they're, they're not, it's not always a, a bad thing. But just – Stick to it, man. Just keep going, believe in it, and don't stop until you, you get your success. I love it. I love it. And how can people reach out to you if they're in the area or just want to pick your brain? What's the best way to reach out to you? Oh, cut out a second there. You there? Okay. Jesse, you there? Difficult, difficult. Yes. Uh, yeah. What, what's the best way to pe for people to reach out to you? All right. We are having technical difficulties. We will put it in the show notes on YouTube and the podcast. But for everybody out there that is listening, if you are going to take, if you're going to implement cold calling, TTP, talking to people into your business, you absolutely have to check us out at wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. If you're the person that has a full-time job and can't uh, get away every second you get a lead, then you need to check us out, wholesalinginc.com. If you're in the military, if you are, if you are, um, if you don't have a huge budget to be able to pay a ton for marketing, wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP, set up a call. It'll be the best. I will personally mentor you on this and we will get you going. Um, Jesse is frozen right now on the other, on the other end, but he was so incredible. I hope you took some, some really strong gold nuggets on there. A vacant house data feed is where he found his, his deals. He called him up, um, George Flans on Facebook, check him out, reach out to him, tell him that you heard him from me, mention my name and he will hook you up. Okay guys, until next time, I encourage you to talk to people. Love you. See ya.